On the ninth day of October, Halloween gave to me nine Roddy's seizing, eight snowy mazes, seven bacons digging, six doorways bending, five children yowling, four zombie bulls, three haunted mirrors, two monster houses, and a fog that makes it hard to see. Well, hey there, everybody. Happy Friday. It is October 9th, and that means it is the ninth day of October. That's how it works. Uh, And our ninth day of the 31 days of Halloween, which means we got a brand new movie for you today. And going into the weekend, look, we got to do something special. And there is nothing more near and dear to my heart than a haunted house story featuring Roddy McDowell. Uh, first of all, I love Roddy McDowell. Uh, I loved him in Planet of the Apes. I loved him in this. I love him in Fright Night. I love him every time I see him pop up in a bit role. I love him when he's the star of, of a television show or, or a movie. I find him to be a very charismatic and funny and charming and nuanced actor. You know, even at the time of, you know, the 60s and 70s where there was still a hint, there was a whiff of that post that post Brando kind of performance, like after he hit the scene and everybody was like, Oh shit. Like you just act like a person in movies and not like you're on a stage. And so while you still had these very kind of stilted Shakespearean actors, uh, in a lot of British films that had that kind of stodginess to their performances. Still Roddy McDowell always seemed like very natural to me. Natural in a way that always made me root for him in a movie. Every now and again, you'd see him pop up in kind of a villain role, but I never really thought that worked well. Uh, I just like him too much, I think. I'm too much of a McDowell head. I'm a a, a Roddy file. And so this is a movie I kind of found... uh, The movie, of course, is The Legend of Hell House, which is also, much like Stir of Echoes, a a story uh, derived from the writings of Richard Matheson. And Richard Matheson's um, Hell House. Do I have that right? Is that the same Matheson? Or is that Richard Christian Matheson? Oh, I don't have my copy handy. Oh, what a fool I am. Uh, One of the Mathesons. Father and son (laughs) horror writing team. Both of them fucking great. So, could have been Richard Christian Matheson now that I think about it. But regardless, The Legend of Hell House uh, hit me when I was, oh... Preteen, early teens, something like that, uh, is when I discovered uh, the Legend of Hell House, and and it was just, hey, this is a British horror movie about ghost hunters, and by that age, I already knew that I liked British films. There was uh, something about the way they approached horror where it was very matter of fact. Of well, clearly the Count is a vampire, uh, you know that kind of thing, where they took it very seriously and nobody winked at the camera and that kind of thing. And I always prefer that. I like I like seeing, e- even in a, a movie that sort of acknowledges the silliness of its premise, something like Scream, uh, which isn't silly, but acknowledges like this is a slasher movie premise, but the whole movie is, oh, we're in a slasher movie. You know, that kind of thing where they still play the horror part of it straight. And, and that's what I wanted. And that's what British horror films gave to me. So I was in, intrigued by that. Then you throw in Roddy McDowell and the haunted house and I was bought and sold. And I was way too young to see this when I did. It's not that I didn't enjoy it when I saw it for the first time. Cause I very much did. I was just too young for it. And even now there are times I'm like, I might be too young for this movie because it's a strangely sexy horror movie. Um, there's a lot of talk of, you know, orgies and one of the characters in the movie gets all horned up, uh, because of the house. Like they don't, they don't get possessed like Jack Torrance did in the shining yesterday and start wanting to hack up their family. Uh, they just start wanting to fuck, get drunk and fuck. Uh, so, all right. If you, if you don't know, here's the rough premise. Roddy McDowell is a medium who, uh, was sent to hell house, which is the most haunted house in all of England. Uh, and, and in the fifties, in 1953, he went and everybody in the expedition to check out this haunted house died or went crazy or was crippled or something, except for him. 
and it took him a while to recover, but he's going back in because this super rich dude buys the Belasco house, which is Hell House, and says, I'm about to die, and I want a firm answer on life after death. So I'm going to send a physicist, the one survivor of the previous expedition into Hell House, and this like super star uh, medium. And they're, the three of them are going to go into this house, and they're going to come back uh, in five days, and they're going to let this dude know if there's life after death. And the reason they do that is because Hell House is notoriously haunted as fuck, and everyone who goes in there, as I said, goes crazy or, or is maimed or dies. So therein lies our premise. We go into the house, we're in there for five days, much like The Haunting. It's very similar. Uh, in fact, I saw someone incorrectly attribute this movie to being a, an adaptation of The Haunting of Hill House, which it is not. It is an adaptation of the book Hell House uh, by Richard Matheson and or Richard Christian Matheson, uh, whichever one it happens to be. So if anyone ever tells you The Legend of Hell House is based on The, the Haunting of Hill House, uh, you have my permission to uh, hit him in the face with a shovel. Uh, you have my permission, but of course you still have to face the legal legal consequences of doing something like that to your fellow man. Um, also, don't hit your fellow man with a shovel. Okay, so back to Legend of Hill House. It or, What's terrific about the movie is it does a lot of setup stuff uh, that I really enjoy. I like good ghost stories. And this movie is kind of chock-a-block full of them. This also has, uh, you know, we talked about this when we talked about Oculus, about great expository scenes in movies. And there's one here, maybe I like it so much because it's delivered by Roddy McDowell, but there's a point where um, the physicist and his wife, who has accompanied him uh, into the expedition to to find out about life after death at Hell House, um, there she's wondering aloud about the history of the house, and it's sort of the the scene that lets the audience know, here's all the heinous shit that happened in the Belasco mansion over the years, which by the way, when they arrive, like the, the windows are all bricked up. Uh, and when they see it, Roddy McDowell is like, yes, they didn't want anyone to see inside. And I'm like, Oh, I love everything about this. So <laughs> Roddy McDowell delivers this monologue about all the, the debaucherous shit that happened when uh, the the guy, the Belasco who owned the house, um, would throw these, like, Bacchanalian parties, and everybody would get drunk and do drugs, and then he just starts rattling off, like, all the things that would accompany these parties, and it was like, you know, Satanism, cannibalism, uh, bestiality, like, all this stuff that, it, it's just like, you know, the worst of human behavior, the most uh, depraved human behavior and whatnot. And... Uh, and then Belasco disappeared, you know, like when they finally opened up the house, everybody was either dead or insane, except for Belasco, who is gone. Uh, there is a record that plays at one point to welcome them to the house. And there's, a, you know, it's like, I hope you find what it is you seek here, you know, that kind of thing. And when it's over, Roddy McDowell says, you know, Belasco used to say that he could pass undetected among people by getting them to focus on something in the room. Who's to say he wasn't moving around us just then? And it's that kind of shit I love in a horror movie. I like I like the idea of like, oh, this this haunting is is omnipresent and, and omniscient and is just kind of fucking with us. And it is, oh my god, it's such a delight of a movie. I really can't recommend Legend of Hell House enough. It's got good, uh, some, not... Like jump scare kind of stuff, but there's some good creepy moments in it. There's uh, a whole storyline about Florence, who is a psychic medium, suddenly becoming a physical medium, and the house kind of tricking her into getting sexy. And it's fucking crazy, but it's good. And the physicist's wife, like I said, gets all horned up because uh, the house wants her to get drunk and fuck. And Roddy McDowell is like, you know, I'm shutting myself off uh, and won't engage psychically with the house at all. And it's just like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to run my five days 
and I'm going to collect the money and I'm going to get out of here. And if you guys, he even says at one point, like the house doesn't mind guests, but if you attack it, it's going to defend itself. And that's kind of what the physicist is there to do. Cause he's got a machine that he thinks can break up this psychic energy. And he's like, it's not sentient. It's just energy and you can dispel it. And Oh guys, it's so good. I didn't want to tell you any more about it. Here's another thing I like about uh, the legend of hell house. The Legend of Hell House is a movie that explains its haunting and it resolves its haunting um, in a way that is maybe the best I've ever seen in a movie. Like the, the haunting, the 1963 haunting, one of the great horror uh, haunted house films of all time, if not the greatest. Like that's a movie that ends with maybe it's haunted, maybe it's not. If it is haunted, you know, you do what Russ Tamblin says and, you know, it should be burned and the, uh, the earth sowed with salt. But Legend of Hell House uh, is like, no, 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 here's why it's haunted. And by the end of the movie, I'm not going to tell you exactly how it goes, but there's a definitive answer as to how, how this haunting will or will not continue. And man, I love it. I love this movie. Uh, It's a a terrific film. All the performances are are really good. They're very British. Roddy McDowell is fantastic, and he, he's got uh, a great moment where he, he opens himself up to the house for like two seconds and immediately has a seizure, and watching Roddy McDowell have a seizure on screen, didn't know I wanted it, but I loved it. So, uh, going into the weekend, folks, I cannot recommend enough, check out Legend of Hell House. It, it's a terrific movie. I know it's uh, it's on Amazon Prime in HD, which is Maybe the first time I've ever seen that movie in HD, and it looked great. And uh, a young, spry Roddy McDowell bouncing around in that old manner was was just fine by me. Um, man, oh, I love Legend of Hell House is a personal favorite of mine. It's one of those movies that if you watch that movie and you listen to me talk about shit on other shows... That is a movie that's a touchstone for me. It is incredibly influential on me in terms of just the kind of stuff I like. You know, it's one of those movies like I wish they would make them more like The Legend of Hell House. That is that is sort of my uh, one of my foundations, you know, uh, of horror in, in a lot of ways is uh, is the way that that movie tells its story and kind of the the taboo shit that it gets into. But it's not. It's not overt. uh, Well, it is overt, but it's not gratuitous, I suppose. There's not a lot of nudity and that kind of thing. A little bit, a little bit. Some, especially some profile shit. Um, It's not totally pristine uh, or prudish, but uh, it's it's very very good. So if you've never seen it, give it a a shot. I I think you're going to enjoy it. Look, uh, we got big doings. Uh, We're coming up on the weekend, and this weekend is going to be a little bit of a special event where. We're going to kind of cover the same thing for a couple of days, but I'm just going to leave it there and, uh, and then we'll talk more about it, uh, tomorrow. So it is Friday. Have an amazing Friday. Enjoy yourselves. Have a spooky Friday. Have a spooky start to the weekend and then, uh, come back here, uh, this weekend and we're going to talk about some more stuff, uh, to celebrate Halloween. Um, until then have a frightening Friday. Friday.